On Sunday, April 23rd, the religious communities and the pilgrims of the Holy Land celebrated the Feast of Divine Mercy in the Basilica of Gethsemane in Jerusalem. We are here to discover some aspects of the life of this disciple of Jesus in Jerusalem. The Psalms, the prayer of Israel and the Church, was the theme of the 42nd Biblical Theological Refresher Course organized by the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum of Jerusalem. On Monday, April 24, at the Cathedral of St. James in Jerusalem, the Armenian community commemorated the 102nd anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. The exhibition at the Israel Museum, Christmas through Easter, revealing an unusual Jesus, a faceted path that represents a new milestone in the relationship between Jews and Christians. Honoring the visions of Sister Faustina Kowalski, the Polish nun canonized by Pope Wojtyla in 2000, the Feast of the Divine Mercy was officially established in the Church by St. John Paul II in 1992 to be celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter, the so-called Sunday in Albus. Jesus especially told Santa Sister Faustina, and she wrote it in her diary, that trusting in God is the only essential thing to do without making calculations and without reasoning. We need to trust that God is good, that He is merciful, so that no one is afraid to approach Him. In 2016, a year dedicated to mercy, one of the holy doors was opened in the Basilica of Gethsemane in Jerusalem. On Sunday, April 23, on the octave of Easter, representatives of the various religious communities of the Holy Land, along with many pilgrims, commemorated this festival. Today, just like Thomas, we can truly touch the merciful heart of God. We can place our hand in His heart. He is hurt. We experience it when we go to confession and when we receive the Eucharist. These are the most intimate moments when we can totally unite ourselves with God. On this day when the deep bond between the Easter mystery of redemption and the celebration of mercy is revealed, the icon of merciful Jesus is the depiction of the Word of God. In the image of the divine mercy, Jesus demanded the inscription, Jesus, I trust in you, our trust in him is all God wants from us. God just wishes us to express our desire to be with him, our trust in him. God will do the rest. The name of Mark, as explained by Father Matteo Monari, professor of biblical exegesis, appears in five books of the New Testament. However, we do not know whether all the passages refer to the same person or rather to other characters who were part of the first generation of Christians. One thing in any case is certain. When we refer to St. Mark the Evangelist, we above all remember the interpreter of St. Peter in Rome who, at the request of the locals, wrote a gospel to remember all the preaching of Peter, so precious to their ears that they did not want to miss any details. And after St. Mark collaborated with St. Peter's preaching in Rome, Marco Evangelista, sappiamo che poi dopo aver fatto da interprete a Pietro a Roma, ecco sappiamo che si è recato in Egitto e che ha 
We know he went to Egypt. We also know that he evangelized the region that was near Alexandria and that he was the first bishop of Alexandria in Egypt. This is why he is considered the founder of the Coptic Church and he is so important to that church. It is said that he was a bishop until the years 62-63 when the Bishop Aniano took his place. Then according to tradition he died around the year 68 AD. E poi secondo la tradizione copta anche sappiamo che morì martire più o meno intorno al 68 dopo Cristo. Nearly 2000 years later in the holy city you can still see places related to his life. Brother Matthew believes that St. Mark's Monastery, a Syriac Orthodox church near the Holy Sepulchre, was built in memory of Mary's home, Mark's mother, in which many Christians gathered to pray during Peter's captivity. From April 18 to April 21st in the Immaculata Auditorium at the St. Savior Monastery, the 42nd Biblical Theological Refresher Course organized by the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum in Jerusalem took place. More than 160 students enrolled to study the theme of the Psalms, the prayer of Israel and the Church. A richiesta generale, at the request of most of the participants, we focused on the Book of Psalms, a Bible book that is very familiar to all of us. We tried, to the highest level possible, to complete the study of this book in three days and nine lessons, which covered all of the Psalms. Un approccio completo per quanto possibile, cioè dal primo all'ultimo salmo. As a religious, my love for the Psalms arises first of all from the connection we have with these texts from the Old Testament, which are part of our way of communicating with God. Psalms are the word of men to God, and at the same time they are God's word to men, because they are part of the Bible, therefore they are a revelation from God. So it is very important that in our personal prayer life, we realize that we are saying a prayer that God himself has given us, and that we can say when we want to turn to him. The course lasted four days, with a total of nine conferences on the Psalter as a book of life. The figure of the woman is also examined in the Psalms. Sono certamente contemplati in questa preghiera e sicuramente possiamo dire This prayer certainly examines women and we can say that a woman in the Psalms and in real life in writing in general is the symbol of life. So we wish for all the women who are listening to us to be this great sign to fulfill their mission of evangelizers and witnesses to life and above all witnesses of the great acceptance which is the best way to express God's love. Questa accoglienza grandissima che è il modo migliore per esprimere l'amore di Dio. Psalms invite us to conversion. They are witnesses of Jesus as the Messiah. Bisogna tener presente che i salmi sono stati la preghiera di Gesù. We must keep in mind that Jesus prayed the Psalms. In moments of difficulty, even in times of joy, Jesus echoed the feelings that these Psalms transmit. Jesus also prayed the Psalms to find the meaning of his mission as well as the will of God, after which he embarked on the journey to the cross, the passion, and the resurrection. Quale fosse la volontà di Dio? Che cosa Dio desiderasse da Lui? In the Refresher Course program, the afternoon is usually dedicated to excursions. This year we will visit the places around and inside Jerusalem where the Psalms originated as prayers. The Psalms of Ascension, the Psalms of Trust, the Psalms of David. We will try to live this experience. On Friday, as a tradition, we will use an entire day to go on excursion to the places outside the city. This year we will go to the Negev. The Psalms were placed in the biblical and liturgical context. Psalm 22 in the fourth gospel and in the passage of the Passion of John. And the apocryphal Psalm 151 in the ancient tradition. First of all, the Psalms are a topic I did not know, but after listening to the priests who talk about this theme, I now understand that the Psalms are suitable to us, to every person. 
avere questo aggiornamento. Having the opportunity to participate in this biblical theological refresher course on Psalms represents an important enrichment. I lead groups of pilgrims to the Holy Land and I can say that passion combines our spiritual personal revival to the richness of being able to offer this study to the pilgrims and the people whom I accompany. It is a very rich study and I can say that the Psalms represent the word of God that we eat and that we even chew in our lives. It is a very profound wealth. This encourages us to pray deeper. One hundred and two years later, the pain is still there. The Armenian community of Jerusalem has once again commemorated this tragic event, the genocide of over a million and a half Armenians. For the occasion, a mass presided over by Father Nirsa Aloyan was celebrated in the Armenian Cathedral of the Old City of Jerusalem in the presence of many faithful. The feeling is uh, a very emotional. Uh, on the centennial of the Armenian Genocide in uh, 2015, the victims of Armenian Genocide were canonized. And from then on, all our victims were canonized. And we celebrate also as a feast because they are for now for us, they are martyrs and they are declared as saints. And we ask their bliss, blessing in all our efforts to achieve the international recognition. 102 years have passed since the genocide and this is no small thing. We have not only suffered a massacre, the Ottomans also expelled us from our homeland, the homeland of the Armenian people for over 3,000 years. And today we live in the diaspora. We do not want the Armenian people to forget the life they had before. We must fight to recover that life and claim our rights. They alternated between uninterrupted prayer and moments of silence. On the faces of the faithful present, the indelible memory of the suffering of a people still in diaspora. The most important thing for me is never forget the tragedy of our grandparents and our fathers, the tragedy of that massacre. 102 years later, we ask Turkey to recognize this massacre and we continue to fight to claim our rights. The Armenian Genocide is one of the first massacres in history and it must be recognized by the whole world without exception. At the end of the celebration, facing the seven crosses which represent the memory of that massacre, the Armenian community embraced the recollection of that tragic event, so that this tragic mystery of iniquity, as pointed out by Pope Francis during his visit to Armenia last year, that people suffered in their flesh, remains as a warning so that the world will never fall again into the spiral of such horrors. The picture of a rabbi preaching in the temple, a chest x-ray, a cross made of tanks, remnants of scrap and military uniforms. These are some of the unusual representations of Jesus displayed in the exhibition Behold the Man, Jesus in Israeli Art at the Israel Museum. The idea for this show was uh, to see how the figure of Jesus is part of Jewish and Israeli art. And I got to this by looking at many, many works of art and realized that there are many Christian symbols, many appearances of the figure of Jesus in different uh, ways and in different levels. And this aroused my curiosity. Why would Jews deal so deeply with the figure of Jesus? Over 100 works created by 40 different artists were selected for the exhibition according to different artistic languages, painting, sculpture, photography and videos. 
different ways to deepen the bond between the figure of Jesus and the Jewish-Israeli world, a bond that is often silent or troubling, but still open. What I realized was that uh, uh, the, the relationship of Jewish-Israeli artists to the figure of Jesus is very positive in many, many ways, because although without believing in his divinity, without believing in him being the Messiah, they did believe and they did uh, relate to his human side, his, uh, his uh, moral side, his universal side. The journey dates back to 1870 and it progresses not only according to a chronological order but also according to different thematic sections. So this is I think the section in which we talk about Jewish art uh, that it isn't connected directly with the state of Israel, but it's connected to the ideas of Christianity versus Judaism and how Jesus can become a symbol of a bridge and of the suffering of the Jews. Portraying him as a Jew, he could maybe bring to a kind of a closer relationship between Jews and Christians. This is an area dedicated to Zionist artists who arrived in the Holy Land at the beginning of the 20th century. The figure of Jesus is deepened by a strictly personal perspective. This piece is by Moti Mizrahi, uh, an artist who is uh, disabled. He walked through the whole Via Dolorosa with his crutches, with the image of his own face on his back. So, uh, in a way, this is a very personal piece. It's a, pers a piece about personal suffering, taking Jesus's. Uh, a voyage as a kind of a voyage that he can take upon himself. The journey widens the horizon again. Christ's passion becomes an expression of the suffering of the least of society. A cross is made with the remains of a destroyed Bedouin village and a picture that expresses the pain of a mother is exposed. This photograph was taken by Micha Kirchner in 1988, in the beginning of the first Intifada. The woman, Aisha al Kurd, was put in jail. She had a child in jail. And the photographer took a photograph, which is a very beautiful um, universal message of compassion, the mother and the child, in a Christian format. So we have a Jewish artist taking a photograph of a Muslim woman and a child in a Christian format. The exhibition does not aim at mixing up the different identities, but on the contrary, it allows room for the questions of each individual artist. Walking through the halls, we are struck by the works of art, some graphic and some provocative, while the liturgies of the Holy Week come to mind. And Jesus' death on the cross for all humanity is now enriched with new nuances. The mission of the Christian Media Center is to bring the message of the Holy Land, the land of the fifth gospel, to the world. Broadcasts, reports, news, documentaries, the latest happenings in the church, and of the daily life of Christians in the Holy Land. You can help us in this mission, raising awareness and spreading the message of the Holy Land. Help us. Visit our website.